Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are from. Welcome to another live stream. Paul, seriously? Yes, seriously. Two more nights. Two more nights and I am home. So I figured I'd spend some time, we'll go and show uh, we'll do a, a screen share, and I'll go through some of the uh, ways I do my desktop, you know, customize it, what programs I like to install, you know, a um, little something interactive. So how you doing tonight, Paul? And Steven Anderson, how are you? Welcome back yet again. You guys sick of me yet? You ready for me to get home? I'm kind of ready to get home. But as I get home, I'll be back to two or three streams a, month, a week. Try to do a couple of videos. Tony, hello. How are you, Tony? Thank you for jumping on. I know it's late for you. Appreciate it. Hello, Gnostic. You're just listening now and doing other things at the moment. Yeah, I may open it up to, uh, you know, a guest later. Uh, but just figured I'll do something a little different. Everybody does videos on doing their desktop and how they set it up. But how many do it live? So you get to see screw-ups and, you know, hopefully I don't kill the stream as I install something. But. That's what I'm going to do tonight. So hopefully that's all right with you guys. So um, I right now have a chat here, but I have my tablet right here, and I got the chat up there so I can be um, listening or watching your comments. Steve says, dog's going crazy. He's hungry, working on feeding him before he eats me. Do that. Don't want to hear screaming over the internet. Steven didn't feed his dog. <laughs> okay. So the stream looks like it's coming along pretty good. I guess it was worth paying a few extra dollars for super speedy 14 megabyte a second internet. But it does look much better. I kind of rewatched the stream from yesterday and even um, some of the uh, uh, bumps in the video weren't that bad. So money worth well spent. Uh, I wasn't about to pay a whole two weeks worth. That would have been really expensive. But 25 bucks for five days, that's, I can, that's not a problem. So, how you guys doing this evening? Hope you're doing well. Um, I was kind of off today. It was supposed to be a day off, but uh, as I was talking about how smooth these things are going in this um, conversion, uh, at today, the crap hit the fan. Um, I had to stop by there a couple of times. Um, their network switch went out, so it killed half the uh, systems in the store. So, hello, Louie. How are you today? But I did get to go out another hike. Um, I will post some pictures on MeWe later or tomorrow. Um, over in, uh, again, I was over on the New Hampshire side, and there's a spot called Madam Sherry's uh, Castle. Very interesting history behind it, and I'll talk about that. Um uh, on another time, post some things about it. But I got some pictures. Went on a nice trail, went up the mountain as far as I could again. And we're not talking massive mountains here, but they're a good size. And the slopes were pretty steep. And I was, uh, I think I went for almost an hour and a half uh, hike today. Uh, got a lot of fresh air. Um, but uh, 
my legs are killing me, but it was really good. Oh, Louie, you got out for the summer already. Very cool. Very early. All right. I hope you guys, uh, you have plans for this summer, and I hope you enjoy it. Drinking some iced cranberry apple iced tea here. And sweetened, of course. <clears throat> so I will try to uh, acknowledge um, those that come in the room. I do notice probably because I got this chat box up that this one's not updating. So I'm going to kill the one on the computer. And I might lose uh, some of your chats for a moment. I'll close that. Let's see if I can refresh this. There we go. Okay. I'm gonna pause the video on that one. <clears throat> so Tony so, uh, says hi to Steve Anderson. And what's that crunchy noise I can hear? The ice cubes in the cup. I got my snacks away. I just ate. I just had a, a slice of brick oven pizza and a salad. That was my dinner tonight. Went to a great place here. Uh, if you're ever in Brattlesboro, Vermont, it's called On the Top, Top of the Hill. It's a barbecue place. Um, I'll have to post a picture of that. I stood there for 15 minutes before I can figure out, figure out what I wanted to eat. It smelled so good there. And so I ended up at a barbecue place. I ended up with pulled pork and um, uh, a pulled pork plate with came with um, um, baked beans and um, let's see, I guess I'm going to have to keep that rolling here. Uh, and coleslaw with a very good lunch. Um, Got to have a good barbecue. So, okay. So I hope this works. I hope I keep up in touch with you guys. So, my desktop. Let's do a little screen share. Gonna do the time tunnel effect. Lower that. Let's hide that. So my wallpaper is a little bit different, but um, that's because I got Variety going. And it's been downloading some wallpaper. Uh, let's go to the wallpaper selector. And let's see what it's downloaded for me. Interesting. Oh, here. All right. For you anime fans out there, some Spike Spiegel from... Oh. Cowboy Bebop, one of my favorite, favorite animes. So with Variety, I get a clock and dates and uh, a quote on my desktop. That's always pretty interesting. I've been playing around with fonts. Uh, the font I have on here right now. Where are you, preferences? It's called Nakula Bold and Nakula Regular. Just something a little bit different. So one of the things I like to do with my desktop is add variety to it. Spices it up a bit. A lot of you out there like to use Conky. That's fine. Conky's works great. Um, you know, it's a preference of choice. I do just like the change of wallpapers and uh, it, it keeps it interesting. Uh, you'll notice that... Uh, uh, the panels have changed. I went in and I selected the GNOME 2 panel because it's kind of close to what I do and been adapting to it. Um, I changed, I put in the whisker menu. I, I got to add the whisker menu. I don't like the other uh, menu. Uh, I went to Subnaptic and I downloaded the weather applet. Uh, time stay the same. Uh, and a clip it. Got to have clip it, or a version of uh, a program, something like clip it. Uh, it's for multiple copies and paste. It, it's a great program to have. 
I set my, f uh, the GNOME 2 didn't come with the files up here, but I put my file manager up here in Nemo for easy access. And then I turned uh, my Windows manager into four instead of two because I like to, when I kind of do these streams, I will usually have uh, Hangouts in one workspace, uh, Gmail in another, and maybe uh, the browser in another, so I can switch back and forth as I'm doing the show. Uh, what can we look at? What do I what do I want to do today? So I had downloaded some dev packages that I will be installing. I downloaded some extra fonts. So uh, the dev packages I downloaded uh, were is Zoom. Uh, this BR scan, this is for a brother printer. I can't really do anything with that today because I, I'm not at home and I can't set it up with the brother printer, but that's what I use. It's really great with brother. They went from a tar file on that to do it. They, they made a deb file out of it. So it's really now easy to install uh, drivers for the brother printer. Skype for Linux, I do use it with a friend of mine. And then the YouTube downloader GUI. So we're gonna install that today. And then we'll go and uh, look at uh, some of the software managers and some stuff that I'd like to download. But first, let's stick with uh, keep with the customization in that. So let's launch the Peppermint Settings panel. And let's go to the Customize Look and Feel. So the default is Peppermint 10 Red. Uh, all these. We'll either change it to the real light or change the highlights. I'm not much on the bright theme. I do like the gray theme. And you see there is a lot of Peppermint 10. Where all they do is change the highlights. There's a good old Atawada dark, regular Atawada kind of, Atawada vada. I do like the Atawada dark, but I find, especially on a distribution like Peppermint, they fine tune it to their, their themes. And sometimes the highlights don't work right. A button won't show up right if you choose one of the others. So we're gonna keep with the Peppermint 10 theme for now. Uh, the uh, um, sorry, the icon theme is papyrus dark, and I prefer uh, the well, they're calling it pepperus, it is papyrus. Um, I'm gonna leave it on the dark. I know some like the numic circle, like Slim, he likes numic circle, and they just like they have the pepper mix where they change the colors. The old Ubuntu humanity. I'm not going to change it. I'm going to stick with my Papyrus Dark. So I'm not going to change my icons. So as far as customization, I had a variety. I changed, I uh, went into the panel switcher, changed it to the Node 2 setup, and I'll show you how to get into that again. Actually, it's called Backup and Restore here, but it's a switch between panels. And I chose the GNOME 2 theme. I took out, uh, when you do the GNOME 2 theme, they have an email icon. I took that out, the web browser, which brings up Firefox. I took that out because I use Chromium. And then, like I said, I changed from the 
uh, application menu to the whisker menu because I prefer the whisker menu. And then I added the weather applet. So uh, if you want the weather applet, the easy way to do it is just bring up Synaptic. Put up your, put in your password. Let's see. My idea of watching uh, another window with uh, the chat box is not working right. I think when you use, if you're on the same, I'm signed into this, you know, my channel on two different um, devices. One of them gets screwed up. Oh well. I'll come back to you guys and I'll look at some of the uh, comments and that. So don't worry if you're new and you're just dropping in. If I haven't acknowledged you, that's probably why. So I'm actually going to close this on my tablet. Oh, there we go. That worked. Paul, pulled pork? Gross? What's wrong with you, man? Are you a vegetarian? Okay, so we have Synaptic Patrick's weather manager. So I just had typed in weather. Let's see, actually, let's do XF. C four. And let's find there we go. So this is what you're looking for, XFCE four dash weather dash plugin. You select it, mark it for installation. Hit apply, you'll find it then in your, go to panel, add new items, and then it will be in here under weather update. Because so we gotta know the weather, right? Clip it was the easy one. Actually, I pulled up the terminal because I knew what it was and I did sudo apt install clip it and my password and as you see it's already installed so I use two ways to install something I use this synaptic package manager and I use the terminal and see the terminals now if you know what's in the um your repo it's pretty easy to install yesterday when i started the stream i said i had installed uh, um, chromium i installed uh it was under multimedia i installed simple screen recorder so i can start out with the videos uh under chromium apps You'll see a version of Zoom here. That's the web-based one. I don't always like to use that. And the same with Telegram. I'm going to install the Telegram desktop app. I haven't done much of anything else. I did, oh yeah, I did download Font Manager so I can install the fonts. Paul, you say your only issue with 10 is it's way slower than 8? Steven Anderson, your dog decided he wasn't hungry? Was he being a spoiled child? Yes, Louie, anime, anime, anime. My son this past weekend uh, over in Chicago and uh, out at the Rosemont uh, the Expo Center, they had um, the Anime Central going on. He took uh, his mom for the first time. Usually, him and I go, 
and she got a, 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 an eyeful all the all the costumes all the cosplay but my son just absolutely loves that stuff okay well i'm gonna install a couple of things here and then uh i'll come back to you guys so let me bring up my file manager and bring up my download folder and uh, let's do the zoom.deb. A minute, let's install the package. It's as simple as this. Installing the dependencies. Paul, you preferred pulled bacon? Yeah, that restaurant, they actually they have a smoker right outside their their um store. And uh, they do their own smoking there. It's great. Uh, the uh, I wish I would have you know gone there first uh, instead of a couple other restaurants that I went to. I have been up here because that place. I mean, I mean everybody here knows there is nothing that beats a good barbecue. Nothing. So this is like watching the grass grow, right? Paint dry. Fun, isn't it? Peter Patterson, the mint spider. A curry beats a barbecue, you say? A curry? What's a curry, my friend? I'm sorry. And you 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 in pretty decent barbecue country there. Think anything south of the Make Mason Dixon line is major barbecue country. Here we go. Installation complete. Deb package done. At this point, you can, if you have problems, you can reinstall a package or remove the package. So that's how, if anybody's watching for the first time, that's how you install a dev package. Now, oh, East Indian food? No, sorry, son. Barbecue. Now, I teach their own. If you like that, that's great. Um, I actually do like um, uh, biryani. Uh, it's... Uh, more of um, a Muslim fare. It's not quite like Indian because there's meat in it. It's chicken, but that's some good stuff. All right. So in the process, I have now showed three ways to install packages, not just on Peppermint, but on most distributions. We use the Synaptic Package Manager. We used the terminal, and we used a dev package, a dev file. Paul says there's a restaurant about 25 miles from him called the House of Bacon. You can have anything with bacon. Oh, I'll have to tell my son about that. Steven Anderson, I don't understand that my computers always have a problem with XFCE and Mate, even with the latest kernel. No sound in Super Tux card. Tried everything. System sound, graphics card sound, everything. Interesting. So is St. Raphael in the house? I hope everything, how did things go? Yes, Briani or Briani is, is oh, it, I, I have a, uh, one of my employees at the store. Oh my God, she'll make it special for me. 
she's and then um uh they do like beef tips and the jasmine rice and i like that when they do the different colors of jasmine rice all right saint Raphael. i hope things go better this time uh, let's see. So uh, for a last, so now we're going to add a fourth way to add a package. And that's the software manager. And Peppermint uses the Mint, or which is a variation of the GNOME software manager. Uh, let's see. What do we want to install? How about audacity so basically click on the item gives you an explanation of what it is it shows you what version it is now sometimes in the repos the versions are a little bit behind uh, but it will update and audacity is um, one of the better uh, sound editors that you can put on Linux and it is cross-platform so if you use it on Windows, you can use it on Linux. So let's install Audacity. And it's as simple as this. It's going to download some of these extra packages. Just hit continue. Put in your password. Take a moment. Peter Patterson says, it's the Steve's very own food show once more. We, you know, what? we can't help but talk about food, can we? I mean, Carmine's channel, uh, we don't do too much food on Big Daddy Lennox. I, that would be a lot of chattering about food. But um, it was nice to eat pretty decent. Um, the brick oven pizza, I had a slice of pepperoni. I was hoping they had a... Um, um, a, a deluxe pizza there but they close at nine o'clock i think uh, during the week so they just had what they had it was still good it was good pepperoni and a salad with it really topped it off but i had a, a good appetite today because i went for another hour and just about an hour and a half uh hike um I'm going to post some more pictures. I got a couple of videos I'm going to edit and add together. You ate a slightly, Peter says he ate a slightly later supper tonight at Panera, which is too close to Planet Fitness after my workout. All right, so Audacity is installed. And if we go to our menu, uh, I just like to type in the program start typing it in and do okay and there's audacity ready to go let's see how about let's check out zoom okay so i have to figure out which zoom is what so actually if i go and uh, run it this way. Let's go to internet. There we go. So this is the one I want. I'm going to have to try to remove the, the, the chromium one. And there's Zoom. So when Saturday comes, I can do Big Daddy Linux. So we installed Zoom. Stays in your notification bar. You want to leave it on, but we'll exit out of there. Clip it's already running. Uh, let's talk about one more way to install. So, see software manager and you see software. The software is kind of gnome's app center most of these are, are not app center it's most of these are snaps so let's take a look at something here 
Um, if you like snaps and they work for you, Let's look at this. So it's, and, and it is showing me, okay, you see we have two audacities here. This is the one I down uh, installed from the software manager. And I bet you, and if we look at this, see the source, this is a flat, this is a flat pack. And if you notice the flat pack is on version 2.3. I don't always have success with flat packs. But if you like flat packs, you can use it. Uh, Lollipop. This is a new, uh, newer music player. It's a modern looking. It uses album art. But this is a flat pack. And notice, and, and so it says installed size 52 megabytes, but the download size is one gigabyte. Is for a program like this, is that not huge? I don't know if they have that right as far as the size of it. Uh, Caden Live. You want Caden live. So I believe the Ubuntu Bionic Universe, I believe that this is a snap. Hey, Peabody, how you doing? Welcome. You guys like internet music? Radio is awesome. We can listen to music in Australia and listen, see what maybe Vince and Colin is listening to, English stations and that. So this would be five different ways to install some kind of software on your system to make it your own. Um, I probably not sure if I'm going to leave, you know, I threw up application on here. Um, this did have the peppermint sign on it. If you didn't want that, we can go menu. Um, as far as changing it from what peppermint set it up, that's okay. Um, they don't mind. You make it your own, right? What else can I show you guys? You know, not going to spend all night like customizing deeply on it. Um, I'm going to play around with the color scheme. Um, this kind of gray, I like it, um, but it doesn't pop. I got to play around with um, my variety. Find a font that I really like. But yeah, um, it was really easy to, you know, get to this point by using the uh, backup and restore in the panel settings. Excuse me. So I'm going to transition back. Give me a moment. I'm going to kill my tablet here. So I'm going to lose your chat for a minute. Okay, let's bring the time tunnel effect back up. Let's stop the screen sharing. Hello again. And I got to bring a chat back up.
It looks like I am losing a little bit on the video here. I'm looking a little pixelated for a change again. So I'm wondering if because I was running the tablet. And let me kill the YouTube video. So not an in-depth on uh, customizing of that, but I wanted to do sh do show to any of you, uh, if, if there are any um, newbies out there, the different ways that you can install software on a Linux distribution. The way I showed, or the, the ones I showed, that all works on all your, pretty much your Ubuntu base distributions, your um, Arch, um, Fedora RPM based will have different, they will have software centers, but they will have different commands and all that. All right, let me look at this chat. St. Raphael wants to know if Peppermint is reporting any bugs. Uh, I have not looked at the forum in a couple of days. So, Peter, you ask, is, has anybody been infected by the Antergos news today? I think at this point, if someone wants to join, you want to join, Peter? You're not too tired? Tony says, was never able to get Andrew got us to install, so fortunately, no for me. Peter says to Paul, still getting used to how widespread American cities are, and I've been here for 20 years. Yeah. He says his pastor and him are driving into Chicago next month, so it's going to be an adventure. But you'll be coming up. You actually won't be going to the city. You'll be coming up through the south side, going into Naperville. All right, St. Raphael. Fingers crossed for you. All right, Peter, give me a moment. St. Raphael, he says, Steve, you have a great group of people here. Really like how everyone likes to help. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I came with a thought yesterday and uh, probably stole this from some commercial or something like that. But I think we should have uh, the, the theme, um, come for the distro, stay for the community. What do you think, guys? Come for the distro, stay for the community. Let's find Peter Patterson here. Oh, it helps if I get the link.
All right, Peter, on its way. Hey, hey. Peabody says, pray for protection, Peter. Chicago is a rough town. Yeah, it, you know, I have was born in Chicago. I, I've been in this area all my life. And these last several years, it, you know, it, it's kind of frightening of what has happened and what's going on. But Peter's going to be in Naperville, one of the larger south, south, southwestern suburbs. West, west southwestern, it's not totally south. Although it did stretches, it stretches down to Bolingbrook. So we're getting down there. Hello, Peter. Hey, Steve. You're grainy today. <laughs> Can't hear you, my friend. Nope. You have such good luck with that, either microphone or your settings. Oh, you're going to fly in, uh, Peter, to Midway? Not driving up? Okay, so you're going to the south side. Okay, hear me? Hmm. Testing, testing. Yeah, I, nothing's huh. coming through, friend. Come back, cry again. Paul says, Peter, if you want to see spread out, come to Maine. I think uh, Vermont's pretty spread out. There's, I, I, I haven't looked it up. What's the biggest city in Vermont? I'm not sure. I think they're all smaller towns. So I think... Uh, the city of Elgin or uh, the village of Naperville are bigger than some of the cities here. Peabody says, yeah, that's great, Steve, about the uh, comfort of distro, stay for the uh, community. So, uh, if Peter comes on, I didn't read or see anything on it. So, uh, Enter Ghost probably going by, but how about if I look that up? Maybe that might help, right? See what we find. So Derek on Distro 2 looks like he... he um, One more time. Did a video on it a few hours ago. Hey, so on the EnterGhost web page, it says EnterGhost Linux project ends. What started as a summertime hobby seven years ago quickly grew into an awesome Linux distribution with an even more awesome community around it. Our goal is to make Arch Linux available to a wider audience of users by providing a streamlined user-friendly experience. Here, I'll copy the link and I'll put it in the room and you guys can read it. Yeah, Derek, uh, this was true about a major live session today all talking about Antigos. You back, Peter? Working this thing? Seems to be. Hmm, what's going on? Paul heard me earlier. Can you hear me? Let's see.
<laughs> I don't know. Peter can't hear. One, two, three, four, five. Once I call official line. Yeah, my friend, nothing. Can, can, can you hear me? I believe so. But yeah, nothing's coming through. So it looks like Antergos is going to be no more, guys. What is Omega Beast Ramon going to do? Yeah, I can't, and I don't have you muted. Hmm. Paul says he hears you. Why wouldn't I hear you? Let's see. Bring up my audio control here. Since Steve can't hear me, he makes the worst Scottish accent. He is the worst at speaking Scottish. You know what? Say something. Hey, diddle, diddle, cat and a fiddle. All right. So and this I... is the okay. So this is the problem. Mm -hmm. This little control. Right. Sometimes I hit against it, and I didn't see it uh, mute the control. Yeah. <laughs> so you were Tom. Sorry, Peter. <laughs> yeah, me all worried there because I thought it's the same setup I I use for fiddle and for everything else. So. Okay, so yeah, because all of a sudden I could see that um, your mic's going, and then when Paul said, "I said, okay, wait, wait a minute, let me check this thing," because <laughs> I'll sometimes, you know, it'll fall between my my thigh and um, the arm on the chair here, yeah. and it'll so the let me, down. Let me solve the confusion of our traveling. So on Monday the seventeenth, a pastor and I are driving up, driving up to Midway Airport, pick up another pastor who's flying in from Ireland, and then drive up to Naperville together. Okay. So you're you, you're flying in the Midway? No. Oh, so no I'm, we're, we're driving to Midway. Okay, oh, driving to Midway. And there's a pastor from Maryland. Midway coming Maryland, in, okay. It's flying in. Gotcha. And we're picking him up. Huh? Okay. Well, Midway is a bit of an eye opener. Um, yeah. Been there. That's, that's actually not far from where I grew up, on the south side of Chicago. There, southwest side. Yeah, I, I, so, I've flown into Midway before. And boy, were your arms tired! Ooh, oh yeah, Shh, I'm here all week. <laughs> so, okay, so um, I didn't read the full article here, but Antargos is going bye bye. That's oh. yeah, and Steve, why I think while you didn't hear me, I told the rest of the chat that uh, Derek Dissertube had a whole live session today talking about Antigos. Yeah, I when I did a search, I was, he, he's actually the first one that came up on the search. So let's see. Um Yeah, and that's the problem with some of you know our our, our lovely distros and that they're not maintained by huge groups. Yeah, and between financial and other obligations, because a lot of them are doing on its own, it, it's got to be near impossible to keep up and improve yeah. it and all that. That's a shame. So, I mean, so, I never really use yeah. it in that, but I, I hate to see any of our you know. Linux distros just fall off like that. So the Solus could have went that way, but I'm glad the core group decided to keep it going. Yeah. Paul says Steve is having hear hearing issues tonight. No, Steve is having control issues. This thing is a pain in the butt. I do that quite often. <laughs> but Sky I gotta, Bear, wait, sorry. Sky Bear sorry. sees my little tux behind me. Okay. So guys, now uh, how's the stream looking? Are we both coming in pretty decently? Um, 
I had killed my YouTube uh, so it wouldn't take up any bandwidth. But I, right before I did that, I know I wasn't looking pretty good. Um, I'm looking at, uh, let's see, the connection information. And even though I, I'm getting the speed, I think the, the Wi-Fi itself, the main connection is not that great. Um, all right, let's see. So how you doing, Raphael? Uh, oh, he's doing, he's doing the reboot, and it's doing the reboot thing again. Interesting. Hi, Sky Bear. How you doing? So is this, is the stream looking good on your end, Peter? Yeah, you're looking great, Steve. You, you've never looked better. <laughs> That's because I'm pixelated? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <sighs> hey, it's working. That's all that matters. Huh? Okay. Yeah, I mean, it, it just, um, you know, I worry about... <clears throat> People watching it later and going, why do I want to watch this stuff? You know, it's yeah. just so badly recorded. Um, I, I meant to see if I can get. Um, there's a Jack here with the phone, and I can't tell if that's also then an Ethernet Jack, and if I can bypass yeah. the Wi-Fi. As far as I know, from my own experience, a lot of hotels don't up, don't maintain their Ethernet cables, as in that's no longer used. It's all Wi-Fi. Yeah, more than likely. I, I, I did see something on the Hampton Inn website. So Nostic can't see you at all. He only sees me. Okay, probably because I tapped. Um. So say something, see if it switches. Something, something, something. There we go. Something. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what I did is I tapped on you, um, and uh, that kept you up there. Right. So you, everybody's here to see you anyway, Peter. You know. Yeah. Good workout. Good shower. Good meal. I'm feeling actually good. Yeah. Okay. Paul says there's been some audio dropouts on my end though. And Gnostic wanted the link. Yeah. I'll get him one. Let's see. Okay, let's see. I raised the microphone there. And uh, hopefully the volume is just right. All right, Mr. Gnostic. And then we'll just keep it at the three of us and just so uh come on. There we go. I'm having a hard time typing today. I don't know what it is. So as far as uh, me mentioning curry earlier, let's put it this way. Mexican to America is what curry is to Scotland. Oh, uh, okay. We've got East Indians everywhere. All right, Gnostic, it's on its way. Sky Bear says the three amigos, huh? As Steve Martin would say. <laughs> I love that movie. <laughs> A guapo, the real guapo. <laughs> <laughs> so, what you been doing lately? Uh, what what you been doing since Biddle? You got your um, Kubuntu installed. I know you installed it right then and there. You I show got, I, I actually installed two distros on Saturday night: Kubuntu and Peppermint Ten on two different laptops. Okay, <laughs> Mister Show Off. 
Hey, I'm, I'm at home with Gable. You've got you've got my hotel Wi-Fi. <laughs> Plus, you, you you've only got one machine there, so uh, yeah. working hard. Uh, the food the food bank. It's we are doing amazing numbers. If anyone in the chat doesn't know, I actually work for a food bank, major food bank. When I started in '99, we were doing six million pounds of food a year, wow. fifty counties in Kentucky. And right now we have bypassed 35 million for the year. The, the year ends at the end of June, but we've passed 35 million. Wow. Yeah, it's a lot of food. A lot of food. Very good. And I'll go into the good and the needy, right? Yeah. And they put, they put a Scotsman in charge of the spending budget. <laughs> So they got a tight fisted lad in charge. That's it. Say hey, Nosek. I'm a little flustered right now. Uh oh. Oops, what, sorry. What? I gotta move my. Oh, it's Linux Mint. Sorry, Peter. Hmm. It's Linux Mint. It's okay. Hey, I, hey, I left Linux Mint two and a half years ago, so don't worry. <laughs> no, okay. It's just, it, I was trying to copy a bunch of files for somebody onto a thumb drive. Uh, formatted it into uh, FAT32 so it's compatible with Windows. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it works fine for about a month. And then after about a month after I do a bunch of updates and everything, you know, normal updates through Synaptics or whatever through the manager, uh, basically it starts setting up my disk where it's read only and I can't change it. Hmm. And it, it does this to me on every install I've done with Linux, man. I'm getting really frustrated with it. I'm sorry. I don't want to turn this into a rant video. So it's just calm down. Hey, it's real life. <laughs> yeah, it's well. Linux, man. <laughs> I'm fixing to try Peppermint 10, see how that works. Yeah. I think it, it might have to do with um, the auto mount. Uh, I know. Uh, Mark had said for peppermint because they had it, but I had noticed that if you, it, it, you had to set it up to use it. So, but when you use auto mount, it like, um, it's like going root and it will, once you got something saved on there, it becomes like read only. Okay. It's the way that the auto mount has to work. Um, it doesn't seem, I, I mean, I always see that peppermint or not peppermint that, um, Linux mint doesn't always seem to have a problem, but maybe the updates kind of change that. I, I don't know. Yeah. I, it's another thing that annoys me with, I mean, I'm sure there's a setting somewhere. I just haven't really looked into it, but every time you stick a thumb drive or another external drive on, it basically pops up the, pops up the, uh, Thunar. It's like, I don't, you know, as long as it sits there and shows me that it's mounted, it's fine. I don't need you yep. to pop up through uh, every yep. time. Mm -hmm. I always turn them off, yes. <laughs> oh, there's an option in there somewhere? I never bother to look for it. <laughs> there should be. It should give you the choice. Huh? Yeah, I'm sure there is. I'm just flustered right now, so mm -hmm. yeah, take a deep breath. <laughs> mm. Yeah, that's bad. I think that's why Mark won't, he, he, he doesn't do... Um, on peppermint he doesn't do the auto mount because yeah. it's kind of iffy with the permissions it kind of locks yeah. down the permissions and when i started doing it, i couldn't figure out what it was and i thought i was really screwing up my usb drives and then i found out about that oh usbs are easy just reformat them and start them right again. yeah <laughs> but i'm like why, why 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 can't i get into it you know i, I save something to it yeah hey paul uh he said hi to me uh yeah no it's just getting used to linux basically for me and yeah i've used it on other os as styles of linux and it in a way mint is good for newbies such as myself but in some ways it's really frustrating <laughs> yeah so saint Raphael, any luck or Yeah, did he figure out what was going on since last uh, night? He said he tried it again, and he just tried it again, and he was getting in the, that boot problem. 
I would just, you know what, I would, I would give, if you really want to look at Peppermint, if you haven't yeah. used it, I would look at Peppermint 9, download that. I thought you oh, gave him running. Yeah. Does, well, does he know if he has the uh, um, UEFI problem or not? No, he I, he said he had an older laptop, mm -hmm. and uh, um, it only has three gigs of RAM to it. Yeah. Not but sure it works. should still work. Yeah. 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 He said he thinks it's, it's the graphics. You know, if it's the older of a thing, I I would yeah. You know, if you really want to, because. There's not a huge difference between nine and ten. There are some little little differences in that, but not enough to go. Okay, like I won't probably still update it on my desktop. Um, it's because I got like I said, my desktop's all set up. I wouldn't mind going to the 1804 base on it. Does he know if it's the 32 or 64 bit system? I mean, yeah. that could be an issue. That's a good question, there, uh, Rafael. Is it a 32 bit? Laptop and did the live? Did you play around with it with the live USB? Were you able to maneuver around, check out some things? She said yeah. it's running. It was the, he thinks it was a graphics. It goes to different background sizes. And you got a sixty-four bit. Okay. Yeah, uh, Skybear. Yeah, I basically. Uh was i've been listening to you guys the whole time it's just uh <laughs> i was out trying to pull some uh pull some stuff off synaptics and freaking everything's down on synaptics i even it's went and changed mm. one of the one of the pack uh, the places or one of the servers and it still wouldn't download anything keeps hanging in the middle of every uh, when i try and download i was trying to go get g debbie because this uh -huh. wasn't yeah. working for me and i couldn't get it it would stop in the middle and just say, boom, can't connect to such and such server. I changed it and it still wouldn't connect to a different server. When mm. it gave me, it gave me, I waited for a for a, you know speed to come up. I was like, yeah, 3.5 is good. Let's go. But yeah. So I'm through. <laughs> I'll be on something else in a couple of days. And also you called yourself a newbie, but how how long have you been using Linux? permanently for about eight months now okay but i've i've dabbled in it for since basically nopix three point something yeah with one of the first uh live discs you don't all you, you don't come across as a newbie that's why i asked <laughs> well i've been playing with computers since the late 80s dude yeah i mean yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm with you i i was 8-bit british computers amiga um yeah, um, so all that mine, stuff. Mine was old PC Junior when I started with, so yeah, eight bit, yeah. just like you. Yeah. <laughs> Raphael says just change it to scale and it seems to be okay now. All right. Yeah, no. So we had that discussion on Biddle. What what constitutes a new beta Linux? And there's so many different answers because, like you and me, we have a background of uh, technology and uh, built to use other systems. Uh, which we applied to Linux when we came to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and like it, I said, my my times in Windows ninety five and ninety eight set me up well for this. I mean, <laughs> I always up until I upgraded to XP, I always boot straight to DOS until I wanted to jump out on the web or something. Yeah, and then I'd open up the GUI. <laughs> for me, it was Amiga DOS. I was uh, I was using that for years before, before I went online. MS DOS for me, so yeah. Saint Raphael said he had Mandrake back in '95. Then he waited ten years to come back. <laughs> so, what do you guys think? My little saying: Come for the distro, uh, stay for the community. Can we work with that? I'm thinking. N noobs helping noobs. <laughs> no, because a, a lot of this, you know, all this still comes, I think, comes back to the community. And, uh, and um, as Raphael's, you know, getting some good help. Um, we're offering him help. 
not blowing anybody off. So I like your last part. Come stay for the community. What, what was the first part? Uh, uh, come for the distro, stay for the community. Yeah, but what I distro? Doesn't matter. Yeah. But that's a yeah. question somebody would ask themselves. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or uh, come for Linux, stay for the uh, the community. Yeah, that's fair. Come for Linux, stay for the food. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 um, that, that that's either from a hotel commercial, or uh, well, I, I stole it from somewhere, and I just yeah. saw, I was playing around with like things the other day, you know, um, sayings in my mind. I'm like, yeah, come for the distro, or come for Linux, stay for the community. You know. So I don't know, don't know about you, Steve. I'm missing your birds. Oh. <laughs> um, no, no. Friday night, I'm not looking forward to the squawking. I know it's going to be squawking. They'd be happy to see you. You know, I ran a reefer unit on the back, or I ran a refrigerated unit. Yeah. And when I first started running them, it took me a while to get used to sleeping with it kicking on and off all the time. Yeah. And then. After I got used to it, when I come home for a week or two, I had to buy a vibrator for the bed. <laughs> <laughs> Go to sleep right. Uh huh. Because I was so used to it. I totally understand. Uh, and also, when I lived in Aberdeen, Scotland, uh, my win my bedroom window overlooked a dual carriageway, and I always kept the window cracked open. And when I went back to my parents, it was so quiet I could hardly sleep. Nice. Skybear says he came for peppermint and stayed for the community. Very good, Sky Bear. That's a good one. Peppermint tea. Right. Oops. I'm going to mute for a second. Hold on, guys. Yeah, yeah I I'm, I'm mute every once in a while. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah we, we work with a lot of truckers that come to the food bank, so we speak to them I every day. Hmm? I've actually, believe it or not, I've been involved in a few churches, and I'm not going to go heavy into it, but I've seen churches do a lot of shady stuff. All right. I, I'm the first to agree with you. Uh, no, it basically just, they can't even follow their own doctrine sometimes. It's like, yeah, I, I tell you, again, I agree with you. <laughs> I was in charge of uh, food distribution to the homeless and stuff, or well, not homeless. Uh, but needy people and stuff like that. And they That's have, very commendable, yes. Yeah, and well, part Sorry. of it, this is down in Springfield, Missouri. It's the yeah. southern area, but yeah. And we used to give two basically grocery carts full of goods. This is back when Walmart was still donating. And uh, basically, we'd have sheet cakes and stuff like that, cookies and whatever. Yeah. And Somebody say, "Oh, we got a granddaughter or somebody having a birthday party. Could we get a sheet cake?" I was like, "Yeah, sure." And then they come back two weeks later, the second half of the month, and the same sheet cake was still sitting in the trunk of their car, just smashed up. And what? You know, yeah, I know. It's well, it's <laughs> it comes with it comes with the poverty yeah. people yeah. that are living poverty, whatever they expect it, and they don't care. But so you see all kinds of the weird stuff. Yeah. And stuff that was donated, this is what got me away from a lot of it. Stuff that was donated to the thrift store never made it to the thrift store. Like big screen uh, TV, big screen TVs. It goes that's, to, yeah. Yeah, that's what really got me. Ours is a little more controlled, our food bank. So. Oh. Yeah, St. Yeah. Raphael wants to know if, how to change your pick for the user photo, like for the... Uh, um, Usually, you right click What's on your it. Menu? You, um, you can click on it usually. Usually, yeah. It's been a while. I yep, never brought it up. Or it might be in user setting. Okay. Yeah, uh, under panel, under yeah, yeah. preference, panel preference. Yeah. I never change mine, so yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but, uh, there's a, a GUI you can uh, install. It's uh, called Mugshot. Uh, the only other, the other way too is so Raphael, if you look at your um, file manager, 
and you uh, right click and show hidden files, you'll see a icon in there that's a dot face. So you can take uh, any image and uh, uh, um, re rename that image dot face and bring it over into your home directory and it will you can uh, overwrite that and uh, you can use that that will be um, your image there's a couple ways to do that but yeah you just gotta um, throw an image in there at, uh, and and call it that face and that will do it okay I just learned something right. yeah and then like I said there's um, a, a a GUI if you um, and it's it's called Mugshot, but when it shows up in the um, Whisker menu, it's not called Mugshot. Huh. So it, it, it's like it's I, it was really weird when I first installed it. I go, I know I installed this GUI. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to church tomorrow night. We're grilling out hot dogs. Oh, oh there's nothing like a good grilled hot dog. <laughs> oh. <laughs> There's this guy I've been watching. He goes by Sean. He's like a, a, a cultural ambassador from the UK. Okay. He's from, he's from Scott. I forget where he said uh, exactly where he's from, but he has a YouTube channel and he's been to the States and stuff. And I was going to sit there and say, Hey, maybe you could get him to come and have him meet a bunch of expats. <laughs> Because he's been to like Florida and Texas and a yeah. few other places. Around there, there. Actually, there is a group in like in Lexington, Kentucky, of British expats. It's called the Carry On Club. Does anyone in the chat get that reference? The Carry On Club. Uh, carry sure. On is, is in vultures. Nope. Car carry on. Your accent's throwing me. What carry on? Yeah. How? Right. Uh, in Britain in the sixties and seventies, there was a whole series of movies called the Carry On movies, and it was like basically farce comedy. <laughs> so, a very much a British institution. Yeah, no, I used to get in the seventies when I was a kid. We used to get like started on PBS. We used to get Tom Baker, and uh, there's a one called Goodies, Goody Goody Yum Yum. Oh yeah, oh the goodies. Yeah. Goody, goody, yum, yum. yeah. <laughs> oh, I love them. I, yeah. I need to watch them now. <laughs> <laughs> goody, goody, what? They, they were just, they were absolute satire. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you know, it was local here in St. Louis area. So, yeah. yeah. But it was uh, called, the name of the show was called Goodies. And yeah, the, the, the Goodies. Yeah. Goody, goody, oh, the Goodies. Yeah. And yeah. then Goody, goody, yum, yum was the. Yeah catchphrase there's, there's three guys yeah oh it's been a long time since i watched that yeah the same since <laughs> the 70s for me but yeah, yeah. and then I, uh, I actually grew up on the banana banana splits la 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 oh la, my la. god here. yeah, oh, they did. yeah. <laughs> we're gonna date ourselves again guys yeah, uh, we, saturday we, mornings especially did the banana splits back in the day Size of a that was Arabian Nights. <laughs> I was like uh wacky races myself. And oh, fractured, uh, fractured oh my god, that's the way Mutley and Mutley. That's the best impersonation you've ever done, Steve. <laughs> uh, every once in a while, I can do a good Scooby. Yeah, I'll come home from uh, work, my son. I'll whoa, hey, Raggy. <laughs> Cause he'll he shaves once a week, so he'll get this little thing going. And on Thursday, I go, "Oh, Greggy, BFF." Mm. <laughs> then, yeah, he'll get son? mad at me and say, "Like, wow, Scoob, <laughs> you just want someone to play with." <laughs> Do they still even? Sh I haven't watched TV in over a decade, so they even show that on like Cartoon Network or something? Or no idea. Uh, Scooby Doo. Yeah. Any yeah, it's I mean, still uh, it uh, is still popular. Nick at night or someplace. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I haven't watched cable, well, TV in five, six years. We we're totally internet based now. <laughs> so, Paul, what sounds complicated to you? Talking about changing your face. <laughs> hey, Lamer. Hey, Lamer. The Lamer Linux. 
Yeah, he lives south of me, 100 or so, 200 yeah. miles. Yeah, St. Raphael, he says YouTube has it. You can find everything on YouTube. I did a, yeah. I did a YouTube survey tonight. They have it I for uh, content creators. I was in and out during the conversation, so, yeah. Yeah, it was a like it was almost a fifteen minute survey. I was getting a little, but I I, I didn't survey them really. Not horrible because not everything about YouTube is horrible, but you know they said be honest, let let us have it. We can take it. And mm -hmm. when I got done, I heard a lot of crying. You know, no. Paul says a good grilled hot dog is better than pulled pork any day. Oh oh yeah, the new Johnny Quest series. Yeah, I've seen some of those. Uh, they basically uh, all that franchise came up for somebody bought the rights to them. I've seen those. Yeah. Well, yeah, the next uh, yo, yeah that, Johnny Quest. I used to love it. Um, well, they I forget what it's called. Uh, they even brought back Space Ghost. And uh, oh, uh, yeah, they used to have Space Ghost, Ghost, well, no, Ghost. They, yeah. And what's his name? Adam, Adam West did the voice for him. Huh. Mm hmm. Well, Lemon Linux is under the Tender Watch. Keep safe, mate. Yeah, there's a tornado watch up here too. Yeah. My oh, house nice. has actually been hit by tornado. I was back in 2004. Cool. So, hey, Wally well, White Goat, how you doing? Welcome. Haven't seen you in a while. How you doing? But uh, uh, yeah, I think there was actually Johnny Quest. There was a. Um, I was more I of say a an anime. They, I there was. was a newer Johnny Quest that came out. It's not Johnny Quest. It's called something else. But yeah, yeah. It, it, it's it's uh, it's satire on the old Johnny Quest, basically. Yeah, well, I'm not talking about that one now. Yeah, that was um, the something twins or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, I know that. Yeah, that was a, a play on Johnny Quest. But there there was a newer version of Johnny Quest. But yeah, Johnny Quest and. Um, and it was like this. I think they had one season, so you see the same episodes over and over again. But uh, what 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 was the um, Muscle Man uh, Sky something? What was his name? I don't remember. It's been so long since I watched those. Johnny Five is alive. <laughs> Number Five is alive. I was all back in those days. It was all Ultraman and uh, uh, Johnny Sacco and a giant robot. Uh -huh. Remembers those. Steve Anderson says Josie and the Pussycats, <laughs> which they actually made into a bad movie too. Uh -huh. So, what hours you working, Wally? Yeah, work was so you know here. I keep saying everything was running really smooth. This team is really learning. They're doing really good. And um, I, I told the manager yesterday, you know, she was actually closing last night. So I knew there was, you know, anytime a manager closes, the cash report's going to be messed up. Sure enough, <laughs> it was. Uh, but today, you know, because I said, I hope a few things mess up so I can show you. The network switched for the store. Someone... Um, uh, something happened in our phones and everything goes through like a internet router and we couldn't do any prescriptions tonight since 1230 oh, yeah. this afternoon. The registers were going in and out. So uh, tomorrow I know I am going to have to show her how to do a really big cash report, but it's better today than when we were leaving yes. on Thursday. I was always pretty good with numbers. Of course, I had to play. <laughs> with my comic books aka log books <laughs> as a trucker <laughs> sometimes you run two or three <laughs> how do you know there you go it would say Raphael, mighty mouse and underdog mighty mouse that was uh so well it does name that the kid so you've been up for now 30 minutes Raphael. all right cool at least he's got it running Oh, Wally, 10 hours from 6 p.m. to 4 a.m. Those are horrible hours. I, I used to, I did overnights, you know, many different times in careers, and it was never getting used to, never. Swing shifts are a killer, too, yeah. yeah, going back and forth. 
for me as a trucker, I always ended up uh, pulling into the truck stop around three or four in the morning and going to sleep for sunrise and waking up about two or three in the afternoon just so I do most of my driving at, at night, avoid traffic in the big cities. That makes sense, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, my circadian rhythm is really off. And it's not going to full moons. <laughs> So, Steve, you fly back on Friday? Yep. And when day are you about to work? Uh, Tuesday. Oh, you got a long weekend. Wow. Yep. I make the schedule. Which reminds me, I got to get a schedule made for coming back. But um, I'm gone for two. Yeah, I'm gone for two weeks. But I'm. it's not like I'm on vacation. Hmm. Um, I, I, I haven't seen my family. Um, I haven't had my full... I, I'm allowed two weekends off a month, Ooh. and uh, I haven't had my weekend off for May. It's Memorial Day weekend, so I'll be. I'm typically off on the holiday. Um, my assistant called me today. She's like, "You can have the keys back." I said, "Nope." <laughs> Technically, I'm not back for you know. I, I'm only here for a few more days, but I don't get back to the store until next Tuesday. Yeah, I don't blame I, you on that one. Yeah, I, I got I got it coming, you yeah. know, and uh, they need to, you know, be self sufficient. You got it. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, Monday morning, my wife and I pick out flowers at Flower at Kroger, and go into a Memorial Park, and we visit five grave sites, all family. Oh, huh? uh, it, it's uh, you, that you bring up grave sites, so. Uh, I, told, I um, mentioned that I went to this, it's called Madam, Madam Sherry's Castle, um, just over the river here in New Hampshire. And um, the history was, she, you know, was back in the 20s and, you know, she had this big castle, you can look it up, or not a castle, yeah. castle, but it was, um, you know, a house and she had celebrities and all that kind of thing. And the house over the years, it burned and so it's like a site to go see and i think a lot of horror movies were kind of are, are kind of filmed there well coming back to and it's like a, a road that leads up there that two cars barely fit you have to kind of pull over and if you're going to pass each other well there's a cemetery off to one side of the road and i pulled over and i said i got because the, the gravestones are really old so i took some some pictures yeah and uh I uh, sent it out to my team and I said, um, oh, boy, I got to pick, pick better places to visit because this place is kind of dead. <laughs> and, uh, and, and then one of them had replied, well, don't check in. And I said, um, no, because the paperwork will bury you. Uh -oh. <laughs> It's a very busy place because everyone's dying to get in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why they put gates around them. <laughs> yeah, uh, what comedian said it's you know sure as heck no one want, uh, no one that's on the outside wants to get in and no one on the inside can get out. <laughs> when we were kids, I remember uh, we used to go into cemeteries at night. Mm -hmm. It was uh, you know our imaginations that would get the best of us yeah we would always sit in the far back of the cemetery at night and party yeah well steve Never if you ever make it to lexington i'll take you to the lexington cemetery it's actually one of the most beautiful par parks in town mm. yeah okay like like i told you i lived up in i lived up in frankfurt for about six months doing yeah. construction and stuff so yeah, it's actually a pretty nice area down there yeah very green yeah yeah, Lamer is bringing up the Steve Anderson. Steve Anderson had put Josie and the Pussycats, and it hit it for review because of the word, the word pussy pussy cat. Cat. Yeah, you know, and and Lamer's trying to explain to Stephen that it was kind of hidden at first. Yeah, dirty mind at YouTube, right, Stephen? Uh, you know. Yeah. Well, it's just like my uh, on certain forums where I have uh, uh, status or. What do you call it? Um, admin status. 
Mm -hmm. uh, he's best with them and say, yeah, I'm the guy with the wrench in his pocket. And mm -hmm. Very mm -hmm. few people pick up on that, and they ask me if I'm a Frank Zappa fan. I, <laughs> if, have you ever, well, I, maybe I said it last night about Joe's Garage. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I have it set on, on YouTube to filter words, so, you know, I... Uh, I don't mind maybe some getting through, but like I said, we try to keep this clean as possible and um, that, uh, you know, it is a, if, uh, all these are family channels. And, uh, you know, like I said, I can, I have a, um, <laughs> yeah, but hit it again there here. So Steve, uh, what if you wanted to play Tom Jones song, Pussycat, Pussycat? Yep, and it blocked it. Now, if it just was the word pussy, you know, separated by cat or that would be possibly one thing but yeah it has a strong um i used to back a decade ago when i was on a bunch of uh i call them real-time bulletin boards but before facebook really took off i used to have filters in place and i always used the word frack which yeah. i picked up from uh battlestar galactic mm -hmm. yep. yeah <laughs> yeah that was What's my that? way of getting around the filter yep. yeah well, well, I'm on I'm on Mastodon, uh, which is like Twitter, and I have one filter in there. Any any post that has the NSFW not safe for work uh, mentioned uh, hides it. Hmm. Well, he yeah, asked, so how is Peppermint Ten? I'm still using Nine for now. Um, it's you know, there's a couple of things that are different, um, not a whole lot. Wally. Um, you know, um, you're good with staying at nine. Uh, I'm, I'm actually, I mentioned several times, I'm interested to see what Peppermint 11 will be like once we go to the newer, uh, come next April when Ubuntu comes out with the 2004. And then mm -hmm. um, with the XFCE uh, 4.14. No. Hello, Derek. How are you? Welcome. Thanks for stopping by. You know, Lamer, that's sort of messed up. I can't ban you from the channel. Damn. <laughs> so, Derek, did you hear about Antigos? <laughs> yeah, we were, we were, we, we, uh, so Peter, you had mentioned it in the chat, yes, right? Yes, yes. So I, I looked it up. So I looked up Antigos news, and what comes up is the first thing is your videos. <laughs> so. Lamer, what uh, set YouTube out on a timeout for 300 seconds? Oh, going to yeah. set Steven for 200 seconds? Nah. Or 300 seconds. It's still, it's still not as fun as being a BBS owner. <laughs> With chooser mode and everything, change user and everything. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. It's not as much fun. <laughs> yeah. So during Derek's chat, when I was in there for half an hour before I left work, and uh, a Silent Robot was in there, and he did mention that his uh, Salient OS uh, Plasma is based upon Antigos. So that may have to change. Yeah? Mm. But his main uh, Salient OS is based upon XFCE. But I'm not sure what's, what, I'm not sure if it's pure arch or not. I tried Antigos when I was trying to pick a distro to start cut my teeth on, basically. That's a hard one to talk about, isn't it? Well, yeah. I realized that as soon as I started running it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I looked at it in a VM uh, about a year and a half ago, and um, it yeah. must not have tickled my fancy because I don't remember much about it. Yeah. Skyber asked, so what happens if George Carlin was a YouTuber and started a comedy gig? It's funny because we were kind of talking about him last night after the stream, uh, Gnostic and uh, Chris and I, and uh, Chris threw up a uh, a link to a video that uh, is actually on YouTube, and um, it explains. It's, it's hilarious. I watched it then last night before I went to bed, and it, it's very George Carlin like, but it, it's um, uh, 
the way the F word is used in society for many different things and many different expressions and sayings. And it was, it's hilarious. It's, it's a, true. It's a mm -hmm. hilarious video. Did you read any of the comments down below? It said put up 12 years ago, goes viral, <laughs> goes viral 12 years later. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but so, like, so yeah. lame. You want to put YouTube on a 30, 300 second timeout. Gotcha. There's a classic uh, video of Billy Conley uh, live at the Hammersmith, and at the very end of it, he says, "Now you'll all notice one strange thing when you go when, when you leave here for the next three three days. You're going to be saying the f word all the time. Get used to it, <laughs> <laughs> because his show was just f word f bombs all the time." Yeah. See, that's one thing I never understood about the Brit thing: saying shite instead of just the other word. <laughs> Now you're talking straight. Exactly. <laughs> well, they were they were saying it properly. <laughs> One thing, you know, that's the other thing about that word. I always was. I've heard several different places that it comes from, and one of them was supposedly fornication under commandment of the king. Yeah. Well, what? Uh, uh, the Van Halen, uh, you know, for unlawful. Um, carnal knowledge. knowledge, yeah, yeah. But hey, Steve Gunnick, how you doing? Wally White Coy asks, Is anyone having problems with VLC codec playing videos? I know that there's been certain issues. In fact, starting with Peppermint 9 at the respin, uh, Mark had taken it out of the Peppermint um, uh, install and put in um, X Player because of certain problems with VLC, um, not playing properly in that. I've uh, never had, I've only had two or three videos and I've, that wouldn't run under VLC yeah. and those were came from questionable places, but yeah. I always install VLC and one main reason is a lot of these modern video players do not support DVDs, uh, but VLC obviously does, huh? It's the go to it's the go to video player as far yeah. as I'm concerned. So Derek says, well, it's about uh the install we're talking about Andergos. It was about the install really after that. It's basically Arch. And the Cinchy stall installer was so bad. The St. Raphael says the VLC is back in the software manager. I think Steve was mentioning that, that it wasn't installed by default. Huh? Right. Yeah, he didn't take it out. It's, it's in the repo, but mm -hmm. he now doesn't. It's marked, and the team doesn't install uh, VLC by default. It's going to be with starting with Peppermint Respin. It was um, X Player. Hey, Sleepy. Hey, Vince. How you doing, friend? Steve Anderson uses GNOME MPV for videos. And Gunnick says, Zanergos was okay. Mandrell, for me, worked better. One of these days, I'll take the time to go full arch. And then Paul's crying, I'm not old, I'm not old, I'm not. <laughs> yeah, those days sort of went away for me. <laughs> <laughs> no, back in my 40s, I used to wake up. Lunchtime again. Garlic <laughs> sauce. Oh, oh you're going to take care of your customers. Hi. Is that all you're having? Just just garlic sauce. Huh. My mom used to make garlic sandwiches. She would take the, you know, the minced garlic, and spread it on a, on bread. I'm like, yeah. mom, how can you wow. eat that? Well, it yeah. is good for the circulatory system. Mm -hmm. though, yeah. yeah. Get the vampire. Never talking to anybody, and and when you start sweating that stuff out, woo. Yeah. You know, garlic sauce with some, sh you know, like a shrimp or something like that. Oh, shrimp scampi? Mm -mm -mm. So, Lamer says, the one thing I don't like about X Player, when I put a DVD, uh, DVD in my computer, I couldn't use my mouse or my keyboard when I'm at the DVD menu to play the movie or select chapters. Interesting. I've seen that. That's why I use VLC. <laughs> it's the go-to player, man. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm with you. I, I don't. You get all these people say, "Oh, this looks old." So it works. <laughs> I, I look old. I work. <laughs> I've, never, I've never tried pickled garlic. I bet you that'd be interesting. Oh yeah, I love pickled garlic. Is right? it sweet or is it? How is it done, Derek? Sweet. Steve Goodick says, sweet "I need to make some habanero pepper jelly." Woof. Yeah. Paul, you prefer you prefer to just click on the picture and change to change it that way. You talking about um, your okay. iTime picture? We going back to that? I like making, you know, I like pickling um, jalapenos with carrots, celery, and onion. So sort of brined, then I guess. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the so, garlic, yeah. Interesting. So, Sleepy likes to burp the garlic. <laughs> burp, I, burp the garlic. <laughs> it's good. Even. Oh, I'll leave it to the Vince. Um, <laughs> it's better than other end. <laughs> That's okay, Vince. I, I uh, when I started, I talked about um, a uh, barbecue place here in in Rattlesboro that is called uh, Top of the Hill, and um, I was like, <laughs> I couldn't make up. I was I was hungry. <clears throat> I couldn't make up my mind, and the menu was very extensive. I'll have to post a picture on me. We um, I took a picture of the. It's like a cabin. And they have a lot of outdoor seating. And then if it gets colder, they do have some indoor seating. But you have to order outside. And the, uh, Saturday when I went by, by the place, the line was almost to the road. So uh, the line was about um, 200 feet deep. You know, it must have been about uh, 50, 60, 50 people in line. And uh, I, I'm like, oh, my God, this place smells marvelous. And I ended up getting a pool of pork. Yeah. And Paul out there says, pull pork, gross. I love pulled pork. Oh, man. You, you, has he ever tried it? <laughs> I was you, a pit you pull bacon, he said. Yeah, I heard that earlier. I was a pit master for two summers. So, yeah, I know a little about. Derek says, if you pickle it yourself, you could add sugar. So, I'm not big on sugar these days, but um, actually, when you add um, a I would add like a teaspoon of sugar to my brine mixture and the sugar helps the, like the jalapenos and everything stay crisp. That's what the sugar is actually used for. Why not just drink a drink a wild turkey with the honey, the honey wild turkey. You'll be pickled then and sugar is added <laughs> natural. <laughs> Oh, sleepy. What about that drive through you posted about did they provide munchies? So I posted a picture of a drive through here that they sell a lot of um, the CBD um, based stuff. Um, and they even had joints on the menu. Yeah. Burnt ends are good too, Steve. Yeah. Yeah. This place had burnt ends. They had. Uh, I, I almost like, like I saw catfish. I'm like, oh my, you know, it's like, oh, what do I want? Do I want this? Uh, oh, they have andouille sausage. They have, oh god, they have red beans and rice. I'm like, I'm like a kid in a candy store. I can't make up my mind. I'm looking at all this stuff, and I'm like, okay. One of my team members said that the pulled pork was really good. I said, okay, I'll go with the pulled pork plate, and it was, it was good. It was very good. Um, the further you get away from. Louisiana and the south, the Gulf Shore, the worst. Well, there's too many. How do you say? Too many variations on red beans and rice. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I like making a good red, you know, red beans and rice. Um, when I was uh, got a chance to go down to Louisiana, uh, to New Orleans, uh, we went to the gumbo shop. That was uh, really good. I had um, the um, red beans and rice with the sausage and chicken. Uh, my brother-in-law had uh, uh, seafood uh, gumbo, and as he's eating it, it's getting he's starting to sweat because <laughs> it was getting pretty spicy. Yeah, I like medium spice. I'm not really big on yeah, the hot medium. stuff. 
Right. If it, it, it too hot burns, you know, and um, like when I pickle my jalapenos, um, you can't always tell how hot, you know, how hot the, the peppers are going to be. Mm-hmm. And sometimes they are blazing hot. So, and so, that's too much. So tell me, DT, um, if you put, do you put ice in your uh, red breast? That's flavoring. <laughs> Sleepy says, "Who's mixing their whiskey? What's the Scottish equivalent to a caddy, Peter?" What's a caddy? Oh, uh, well, Toss is always talking about his caddy trunk. Cadillac trunk. Cadillac oh, trunk. okay, caddy. You know, okay. Bodies are going to go in there. Yeah. Is, is there a Scottish equivalent? Track there. <laughs> no, it's just where you 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 either tie them up or off them and toss them in the trunk, one of the two, something like that. <laughs> yeah. Take them out to the. Down in Louisiana, it was so much easier just to you just throw them in the swamp and let the gators at them. But yeah. <laughs> Derek says ice affects flavor. That's what I meant. A little, yeah, it does. Sleepy says a drop of distilled water. Yeah, that's what the experts tell me. I've seen some of the the reviews on a bunch of those uh, Scottish whiskey houses that they have. They've been there for hundreds of years. Uh, but, but I'm not a whiskey drinker. Uh, I do like bourbon, but I'm not really a Scottish whiskey drinker. But uh, I've heard a lot of the youth there do mix it these days. Mm. Oh. Ugh. Yeah, maybe I said, like I said, no, I'm, th- I'm talking about sodas and things like that, right? But that, well, why would you want to put something like Red Breast, which is a good, well, it's a mid grade Scottish whiskey, but it's pretty high end as far as I'm concerned. It's just, why would you put it with soda? I'd kick you in your rear for that. Hey, as long as it's iron brew, that'd be fine. You know, Sean was even that guy. Sean was even saying when they changed the play, the recipe, it's messed up now. I've never tried Iron Brew, but yeah, I am. I don't like no, no. That's a whole. I I could rant on that. Uh, they've changed. They've, Britain has totally changed soft drinks. For, uh, I won't drink soft drinks in Britain anymore. Uh, every soft drink in Britain has a Spartan. So. Uh, sleepy. Did we hear that Belgian monks are brewing beer again? That's well, the monks that we got Bach beer from, if you like a Bach, good Bach. Costco's house brand scotch. At least it would be cheap. <laughs> okay, Lamer, Doc, Jack Daniels, and Dr. Pepper. Never had it, but heard it's good. I would try it. My assistant, she's a big Jack Daniels fan. She kept talking about it so much. So I, I've never been a big whiskey drinker, but I, I, I did get a um a bourbon. I did get a, a bottle of Jack, and How I was I'm going to enjoy that once in a while. I was in my late thirties, and um, through all my partying days in the twenties and thirties, I basically popped open a can of Coke one time, and it tasted so funny. Because it didn't have Jack with it. <laughs> this just uh, Derek says Jack is horrid. Adding Coke to it is t- acceptable. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I I'm a I, I I'm a good. I like a good tequila. Um, I had always been told that you know as you get older, when you get a certain age, you acquire a taste for Scotch or bourbon. Nah, I I don't I I never I I can kind of drink it now. But I still would prefer a, a a good tequila, which I've never had. I can't do tequila because once I start, I don't want to stop, and it just people tell you what you did the next day. Oh, really? <laughs> I, I remember bits and pieces, but <laughs> yeah, it makes me a little crazy. Wally, uh, my only poison is beer. I'm with you, Wally. Actually, lots of only thing, only only alcohol I drink these days. But I like the dark beers. I like the the uh, uh, well, Guin- well, not so much Porter. Uh, 
Guinness definitely. Um, oh, there's a word I'm escaping me. Uh, and Bok. I like Bok. Huh? Yeah. The double chocolates and triple chocolates. And then, oh, I, I know the other one you're talking about. Uh, Samuel Adams makes a few. I like Sam Adams, yeah. But I, I'm a dark. If it's beer, I like the darks also. And I like a really good lager. Um, tell you, um, uh, Sam Adams. Uh, well, actually, there's a good Boston lager. It's not Sam Adams, but actually, it's a more local one. that's really good. Um, a tennis lager back in Scotland is excellent. That's what I grew up on. <laughs> Paul's still doing it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Paul's got to remind us that he's out there. So DT says he has a weakness for Don Julio and Yeho. Oh, yeah. And Brooklyn Naga is excellent. And Sleepy says, when I come to visit Australia, I'll take you around to some whiskey bars, he knows. Yeah, well, if like, I get there, definitely. Like I said, uh, tequila and me, one or two shots and then i gotta change because yeah i go a little nuts <laughs> i uh when i got uh um right before i got married my brother-in-law who was gonna be my best man threw me a bachelor party and uh we were drinking um mezcal and i'm the only one I, and i probably killed a half a bottle, and I'm the only one that really survived that night. No, I, I ended up driving my one, my other brother in law home. <laughs> Lame Lame been, yeah, but he was a lightweight. Firewater, Lame. firewater, fifty proof, dude. Yeah, be careful though; yeah. <laughs> it gets you into trouble. <laughs> Lame was talking about moonshine, and that, that, that's the good stuff. <laughs> yeah, he was talking about that last night. Yeah, um, uh, I love and, apple pie moonshine. It hits you hard. <laughs> I think he was talking about the real moonshine. Yeah, but I'm saying the apple pie one. Does, I mean, you don't think you're drinking alcohol, and something just hits you. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. Yeah. It, it's <laughs> hard to find good moonshine these days. Anyway, you got to know somebody personal. Yeah, yeah it's my, to some of the good firemen around here and, and make it. So, <laughs> yeah, my father-in-law. He he grew up on the uh, western side of Kentucky and. They uh, he he worked for people that did moonshine, and he took it around the country. Western Kentucky is really close to where where uh, Lamer lives. Yeah, I, well, I'm near Hopkinsville. Oh yeah. He, he said it was a little town at the time called Lickskillet. I've heard of that town. But uh, he grew up loving horses, and uh, you know, he wouldn't touch a drop of moonshine now for sure. But back in the day, you do know about the maraschino cherries aged a week at least in uh, mm. either Everclear or Moonshine, don't you, uh, Peter Parker? Peter? No, I don't. Keep going. Oh, it's just you. Either, well, uh, either Everclear. Or if you can get good moonshine, you just basically get maraschino cherries, get a gallon jug, get a big jug. Okay. And drain off the sugar water and then let it age for a week in the fridge. At least mm, a week. That sounds good. Yeah. And then, well, you eat the cherries. You don't really. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that sounds really good. It, it is. is. <laughs> Welcome to the liquor channel. <laughs> Food to drink. <laughs> That's why we never really talk about liquor too much. <laughs> but it's late enough, right? Yeah. But uh, yeah, I'm a, oh, we're already at. Uh, we're all over 21. Hour. I'm going to probably uh, call it a, a night in a few minutes because I want to call my wife. Yeah. And I talked to her a little bit earlier today. She had my son mowing the lawn today. Actually, yeah. he asked him, well, you know, she was mowing the lawn. Um, like uh, uh, her that um, called me uh, yesterday before I started my stream, uh, and uh, that's why I started late. And uh, see, honey, a lot more sputters and stops. Is it out of gas? 
You sound like you was a good kid, Blamer. And Vince is up to anything because it's past midday there. <laughs> it's past Bureau 30 by you, like right, uh, Vince. Oh, this moonshine and that. Ooh. Now, talking about if I saw my wife for five minutes this morning, as I handed her her tea and she walked out the door, and then I came home from uh, the gym in Panetta and walked in the door. So I said, Hey, honey, how's it going? She was watching some TV show. And I said, I'm going to go and watch Steve. She goes, Yeah, you go harass him. <laughs> she, see, okay. she said that. Yeah. <laughs> Derek says his stream last night descended into talking about the wacky tobacco. Uh, <laughs> was demonetized. Yeah. So Derek, did you see the um, the YouTube? Uh, um, yeah, the um, survey and uh, for uh, the creators and. Uh, uh, how well YouTube is for a money platform for creators. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Lamer says toss is a food stream and Steve's channel is an alcohol channel. <laughs> well, it, we, we pair well together. And Steve says I have channels at times as well. Yeah. It's, a, it's an interesting survey. It's, it's like the surveys we do at work. It's geared for specific answers and um, I don't know, you know, oh yeah, we can we can take it, hit us with what you really feel. Mm -hmm. It's about fifteen minutes long, Derek, so um, but anyway. So what else is going on? So what do you go? What are you uh, you doing uh, towards the weekend there? Besides uh, looking forward to Biddle, Peter. Uh, Saturday we got uh, we got two graduations coming up uh, uh, from teens from our church class. Uh, first one is Saturday at one o'clock. So looking forward to that party. And the oh, Lamer asked. He, he never seen it. Uh, the survey if go to um go to your creator studio and it's a blue bar across the top it has a link to the uh survey that's what you should see it should be up there for all you know in the creative studio for all creators i believe skybird says you go to toss for the food and finish off with steve for a beverage of <laughs> <laughs> that work Eric says, what country? Like, Google doesn't know it already. Yeah, they, it, the first question is, what country are you from? So I'm looking forward to Saturday morning. I have no plans for Saturday morning. It's going to be good. Mm. Yep, yep. It's, uh, I, you know, um, I get in Saturday afternoon. Um, should be close to 3 o'clock. My wife will pick me up from the airport. My son will probably, not that I haven't been eating out all week, we'll go out and get something to eat, come home and relax. Saturday, I'd like to say I was going to sleep late, but I never sleep late anyway anymore. I knew exactly what you were going to do on Saturday. What's that? You are going to go into that kitchen and cook. You bet. <laughs> my son, I, I'm going to be interested to see what my son wants me to cook because uh, my wife's a pretty good cook in there, but I, I just, I, I, because I've, I've gotten myself eating in such a way that this eating out, you know, I, I'm pretty good and I actually haven't gone, I, I like have some like salami and cheese sticks and yeah. I even picked up a thing of celery and, you know, uh, to keep try to keep it still low carb um i've gone on these two big hikes now um i've been exercising or going to the fitness room as they call it i think i've only missed two days since i've been here you know it's only been about a half hour but every little bit counts being on the elliptical yeah it's it's the, it's it's goes. one of the questions is am i monetizing my channel 
Yeah, well, in the beginning of the survey, it, it shows who created the survey. I forget the name of the company. Yeah, so you're being monetized just by answering the questions. No, one of the questions is, do you plan on monetizing your channel or are you monetized or something like that? I usually avoid those unless I know the person that designed it or one of the other creators that I hang around. Yeah, no, I, I mean, it was created for YouTube by a, a, by a company. It, it tells you who exactly it is, and you can take a link to the company. Like I said, you're being monetized just by answering the questions because your information is getting shared with everybody that you <laughs> share it with. <laughs> yeah. Now let's talk hey, about Louis, birth you're... certificates. But yeah, never mind. <laughs> and the chattel, no. the chattel trade. But um, yeah, I think uh, I'm gonna kind of do a last five minute warning. As toss you, I'll steal a line from him. Five minute warning, because I can be on all night. I do, you know. Yeah, I ain't get bad tunes about. I uh, have some fun stuff to look forward to tomorrow um at the the store uh Get, getting the paperwork in order <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, um it's going to be interesting because you know we've dealt with stuff like this but there were a couple of things that were happening that as long as we had power the register should still be working and the touch screens weren't working and mm. it was like a lot of weird weird stuff and it's like uh because i was I actually, you know, given in, in my schedule, given today off, which I found a little bit surprising, but I'm like, hell, I'm going to take it. But um, I went in anyway, like a good manager that I am, or the nutball that I am. And then I, I actually went back twice to see how things were going. Um, anyway. Um, Steve Donaldson is making me hungry now. He's a caramel no. praline ice cream. Hmm. Yeah, I've actually, I, I've been pretty good. I don't eat, oh, I know what it is, because I usually have a like a 72 or so percent dark chocolate bar, and I break, you know, I have a square a night, yeah. and I I, ate, I finished it the other day, and I, have, I was meant to buy a couple or one today, so that's the thing that satiates my little sweet tooth, <coughs> um, and uh, I'm like, oh, why, don't, why am I looking for something sweet? That's why. I have to go down to the uh the the see what they have in the uh vending machine. Yeah. Cuz all the, I think about yeah, about now all the sidewalks are rolled up in Brattlesboro. Small town. I think closes there's nothing outside of Dunkin Donuts. I can go to Dunkin Donuts for the drive through but I'm not going to have a donut. That's for sure. Well, did you get a rental while you're there? Are they paying for a rental car? Oh, yeah. Uh, we uh, cuz I we had a, we flew into uh, Hartford, Connecticut and we had a drive up. It's an hour and twenty minute drive. So Friday morning, I got to drive. We got to drive back. Each each of us got our own car. And the company's paying so we we're converting a lot of stores. They're paying some good money. Paul says his responses were a little behind because he was on the road, and he was kidding about the pulled pork. I'm just not a fan of barbecue sauce. I prefer Cajun. Yeah, like I, I prefer my ribs dry. Like I, I don't I don't like wet ribs at all. I went to we would went to a restaurant the other day and they had ribs and they were wet and they were good, mm -hmm. but it was a little bit too much sauce. You know, um, you go into some of these restaurants yeah. and they think that barbecued ribs are loaded with barbecue sauce. And Steve I, I Gunnick's right. He mentioned says there's many kinds of barbecue sauce. Yeah, actually, yeah. my my one of my favorite barbecues from traveling around is North Carolina vinegar. Mm hmm. That's yeah. really nice. Every region's got their own style. Yeah. We always did a we always did a separate dry on all of our meats just so people would have options. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 I I put together my own rub and uh I always add just a little bit more cayenne pepper to it. Yeah. Our local barbecue uh, place called Red State. What's that? Red State barbecue. There's a really good uh, Cajun style sausage. <laughs> but all right, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining us for liquor tonight. <laughs> uh, 
um it's it's always fun you know like i said it's it's always you know lennox tech and more and um you know c come for lennox stay for the community it's you know you guys that work and uh you know I, sometimes i think okay people come in oh hey he's doing a about installs and customization and that oh wait now he's talking about liquor it's yeah, like, it what it just evolves you know? <laughs> just blame but, the uh, people in the chat room yeah, we'll, 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 blame, we'll blame the Australian. How, how about that? Yeah, he can dig it. Vince, <laughs> it's all your fault. Yeah, he's having his lunchtime break, so. But uh, Derek, have fun doing the survey. <laughs> um, all right, St. Raphael says uptime, an hour and 20 minutes for Pep 10. Okay. All right. Well, I, I uh, hope you en enjoy it. <laughs> Vince says he's off the triple A, uh, double A. <laughs> A, A. And uh, this was, Derek's almost done with the survey. Lamer's doing it now, too. All right, my friends. So um, yeah. possibly tomorrow night will be my last kind of night i don't I, I have to actually work a mid shift on thursday and i gotta finish up I, I gotta make sure that i do my laundry before i go because my wife said do not bring me home dirty laundry and i do my, I, I, I wash the laundry in our house yeah and uh so i may not uh, be able to get maybe i'll get on tomorrow or thursday morning before i go in because i don't go in until 10 and give a chance to for um those across the pond not to be up so late i think i'll do that and do a do a stream after breakfast and come up mm -hmm. to my room before i go in i think i'll do that so look for a stream thursday morning or earlier than usual uh for those that uh, usually have to miss it that dashboard does suck this dt yeah okay. i messed with it it bites big time yeah, it, it changed a lot. So, Derek, thank you for stopping by. Raphael, I hope you really have some good luck with Peppermint. Paul, I hope you made it home safe. Um, you know, and then from uh, both Steve's and uh, Sky Bear and Linux programmer, little Louie, Lamer, and then you, Nastic, and uh, Peter. Thank you for making these evenings uh, and my trip here more pleasurable because I would be going stir crazy. Thankfully, the hotel does not have a bar in it or else I would be drunk <laughs> and really not hit. No, I wouldn't be drunk. I, I don't drink like that. Well, thank you, St. Raphael. I appreciate the, the kind words. Um, and Steve Anderson, thank you for what you do. Thank you for hosting that AA meetings. <laughs> it's not anonymous anymore, Dave. Yeah. You broke the code. Oh. Yeah. I mean, he said he hosts it. Oh, yeah. So, no, I know a lot of people who are alcoholics and they need a, a place like that. So, yeah. I mean, I, I, you know, I, I know I don't have an addictive personality and I can have a. I can go through a six pack or it will sit there for a month and I won't touch it. Um, I know many don't have that ability in that. So, all right, everybody, thank you again. Have a good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are from. Oh, Wally, I almost forgot about you. Thanks for stopping yeah. by. Bye, y'all. So if I missed anybody, I apologize. Um, I'll try to keep up with the chat. Thanks for uh, joining us on uh, uh, customization and installing software on peppermint and liquor and a little bit of food. Take so care. you guys all be good and I'll see you soon. Bye now. Bye.